background in uh, symphonic music and classical music via uh, French horn and trumpet, which I played for high school. And uh, then when I went to college for philosophy, I came across the, um, the electronic music lab. I became immediately drawn and obsessed and even though I wasn't a music student, I found excuses and I found um, opportunities to sneak in there and spend whole nights in there just sort of patching and exploring these, these machines. One grows up accustomed to seeing a, a, a guitar amp, or a, a guitar for that matter, has one quarter inch out, or the guitar amp may have an, an in, and it might have an effects end. And we understand what those things do. Then you see, on the back side of a synthesizer, besides the audio out, you see these other things, gate, pulse, pulse out, pulse in, VCF, VCA in. And it's tempting to explore these ins and outs. Not having a formal education in this stuff, it was really trial and error and just, you know, patching in and, and seeing what things did. It was, you know, there was an experimental uh, phase to it. But it really wasn't until about 2001 that, you know, laptop music and the hardware and the interface had become so abstract and it was really this, it was a computer and the performance that was sacrificed too. So it was basically, you saw the glow of, on someone's face sitting behind a computer. For me, it was a kind of uh, a call to kind of eschew all that stuff and go back to an interface that was somehow immutable. I don't think it's retro. In fact, I find it to be quite originary. And so many Nord, Access, Virus, these things are emulating that. They, they're simulating those things. It's not like they're bringing to the fore a new kind of synthesis. It's imitative, it's simulative, and it's virtualized. So I think that stuff's retro in a way. I think the original instruments have their kind of, their timeless instruments. They function for me like violas, and you have great makers like Buchla or Serge, and they're kind of like the Stradivari of, you know, of this type of instrument. Right now, essentially, I have two voices. I have a kind of a bass line, and I have a, a lead synth line. And the lead synth, both are controlled by SH-101s. Um, the System 100 101 keyboard and the 102 expander so sort of function as a kind of bass line. The 102 expander is, uh, the, you know, uh, strong synced harmonics of the bass line just to give it a bit of um, kind of glimmer. Just two sine waves that are essentially tuned to one another. Um, and I'm running them into this wave multiplier, which sort of augments odd harmonics. It um, really produces these really nice, um, at times, some distorted, glassy, distorted tones in it. There's some piano in there. And it, at times, depending upon the waveform I'm using, you can get some um, English horn kinds of sounds. Really unique uh, timbres for a uh, for a synthesizer for you know a classic uh, voiced synth. When I would add um, rhythm, a rhythm dimension or a percussion section, I typically would use um, another uh, 102 expander um, fed by you know noise from either the Odyssey or from the from this or from anything really. Um, and yeah, just the filter produces some of the, the greatest um, kind of snare drum like, you know, um, sounds. My favorite items, I mean, I, it's hard to say that there is a favorite item because everything works, everything has a unique kind of character and function. 
but uh, I think the SH-101 is, you know, as a controller keyboard in the CV and gate, you know, domain, it is the be one of the best keyboards of all time. So for instance, in this, this thing we were looking at earlier, I have a simple sequence uh, from the, um, from the CSQ 600 that I'm going to control with the CERT with the SH-101. So I'm going to play a simple little tune here. And I can add another voice if I wanted, because everything's you know, the root for the CSQ is C, so if you write everything in, in C or E with the System 100, it, it's very, uh... And then you can... ergonomics of playing a synthesizer, you know, an analog synthesizer, when you do have, you know, jacks and there's drift and there's you know, fragility and there's vulnerability, it is like, there's something akin to playing like guitar, you know, strings could break or violin, your the horse hairs could snap or there are all sorts of uh, environmental and material restraints on the instrument. It's not simply a, uh, it's not a playback device. Mm -hmm.